Benvenuti in Italia. Don't touch that dial. Alcohol, sex, everything. Very thin clothes. Very, very nice, very nice. In the next hour, you're in for a little heat. I don't know what to say. I'm, uh, the first time I'm ever speechless. An exotic treat. See how you can go wild, you can do what you want. A lot of glamour. It's incredible. And a hands-on experience. We want to uh, open the sexuality in Italy, and uh, with this, uh, we make a very big experience. So uncork the Chianti. <laughs> and get ready for some fun in the sun. Sleep on the beach and go out in the club at night. Thanks a lot! Solo ci fa in televisione, grazie! Because we're about to get wild Hello. on Italy. The Italians have a favorite saying, la dolce vita, the sweet life. And in the next hour, you're going to be hearing that phrase a lot because we're about to give you a sweet taste of Italy's wild side. But first, let's take a few seconds to consider the components of la dolce vita. Vacationers, of course, always remember the vistas and the vino, the fashion and the food. Mm -mm -mm. Of course, Italy also offers ancient festivals and timeless art treasures, as well as the rituals of the new millennium. Still, defining La Dolce Vita isn't easy, but that didn't stop us from trying. It means that uh, it's very nice to stay doing nothing, uh, enjoying themselves. Sweet life to me means sex, alcohol. Everything. La Dolce Vita di Fellini è... La Dolce Vita is Fellini's movie. It means everything that's Italian. Well, so much for that exercise. But speaking of movies, let's move on to Venice, one of Italy's most romantic cities. There, each year, cinema fans converge for the Venice Film Festival. Like every international film gathering, Venice has its share of superstar premieres, glamorous parties... It's incredible. Serious press conferences. I think the Italian cinema, you know, has played a very major part in my life. And celebrity encounters. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. But Venice has its own special allure, and we asked a few attendees to explain just what that is. I think this this one provokes the creative side of the visitor. This one is a little bit more mellow. It's in a beautiful surrounding, of course, and it's just. It's a, a lovely place, and people really know how to cook well. You feel like you're in a movie when you're here, you know, like some exotic Italian movie, and you're Sophia Loren. Even though she may not have visited Venice as many times as Sophia Loren, Laura Linney's been here more often than I have, so I figured she'd have a few things to say about the festival and the town. So we're here on the grounds of the Hotel Excelsior. Your film is here at the Venice Film Festival. Pretty nice. It's, it's always a thrill when you're able to come to a place like this. And it really is glamorous. Um, and it really is exciting. And it really is chaotic. Now this is my first time in Venice. What should I not miss? What should I do while I'm here? You should, you should find a really great looking guy and dance in San Marco Square at night. Mm -hmm. Do a little, you know, do that. Eat a lot of pasta. I've been doing that. Gondola rides, always a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And just wander, just wander around. Have a good time, you won't be alone for long. I hope she's right about that. But while Laura goes off to promote her movie, I'm going to discover a side of the festival that's not quite as glamorous as this one. Not every film here comes with celebrities attached. Also looking for exposure are small independent movies like this one, Lucinda's Spell. To mark this day, I would be honored to join the winner of the Spell Contest. For the coupling. But lack of superstar power didn't hamper the Lucinda cast when it came to attracting media attention. Sex is magic. Sex is magic. Lucinda's distinctive incantation was definitely effective, luring paparazzi and television cameras to the edge of the Adriatic. Beautiful. But enchanting the press was merely one of many goals the Lucinda group hoped to achieve while in Venice. There was also a very unusual task on their agenda. We are in Murano now, where all the glassmakers live. 
They make glasses, you know, they make sculpture with glasses. And we, later on, we're gonna see Stefania take your her clothes off and pose for Lucho. What's his last name? The name is Lucho Bubaco. Oh. And he's one of the island's preeminent glass artists. What Lucio is doing and what has really shocked the, the Venice art world. His pieces were so erotic, nobody knew which way to turn. Lucio is the, fir the first person to really use anatomy melded to the glass. The anatomy Lucio will meld on this particular day belongs to Stefania Swinney. And before anyone can say presto changeo, the Lucinda star shows that she's ready for her close-up. We'll check in with some of our festival friends later, but first, the best little party town in Italy. Very nice people, very, very thin clothes. Very, very nice, very nice. Plus, the Cinda cast a fiery spell on Italy. My heart is beating really fast. <laughs> Welcome back to Wild on the Dolce Vita. Next, we're going to be taking you to the biggest little party town in Italy. Step aside, Mikino, step aside, Ibiza, and make room for Rimini. In the summer, this beachfront town's wildlife population explodes to more than two million partiers. A lot of partying going on. I love the disco, happy people. And for those in the know, the thing to do in Rimini is dance, dance, dance. In the night it's crazy. You find people, you go to the discos and uh, you can dance with the kind of music. It's, it's very good. The summer disco scene gets hot and steamy when young Italians from all over the boot hit the clubs and show off their moves. Most of the people enjoy themselves uh, in the night uh, because there are many discos. Uh, I know that in Rimini there are uh, 100 discos, 100 discos, yes. So if you're looking for thong-clad beaches by day and hot and steamy nightlife... Sex, alcohol, everything. Rock and roll. You know, rock and roll, rock you know, drugs. Mm. Then Rimini is your dream destination. This is the best city in the world. But long before this seaside resort became the preferred destination for the disco set, it had a reputation for debauchery. This town is a um, touristic town, but has a great story. Back in the Middle Ages, the community's finest church was condemned as a temple of devil worshippers by a powerful pope because these statues were considered too Bacchanalian. Another Rimini highlight is the Grand Hotel, home to one of Italy's most famous sons, Federico Fellini, and the inspiration for his motion picture classic, Amacord. Let me show you one of the most famous rooms in our hotel. This is the room where Fellini slept and he spent a lot of the time of his life. He also had a house here, but uh, uh, we can say that he considered this room as his Real home. But enough sightseeing. Hello! <laughs> Back to the nightlife. Here you can go wild, you can do what you want. Looks like these guys have had a little too much fun. One of the biggest is Mew Mew, just a few miles south of Rimini proper. Several thousand bodies ride here to an up to the minute disco beat. Very nice people, very, very thin clothes. Very, very nice, very nice. The song may change and the view differs slightly as one roams from room to room, but the allure remains the same. If you go to a disco, it's not only the music what is important, but, only, but also the decoration. Our party crawl continues at Peter Pan. At this cavernous club, the sights are sensational, the drinks ever-flowing. The music is very beautiful, yes. there is a, a very uh, nice beautiful, people. Nice, nice people, people. <laughs> very boys, a nice boys.
As night turns into day, the party moves to the beach. La Dolce Vita Beach, that is. But don't be fooled by the phrase, this group is practicing La Dolce Farniente, the sweet art of nothingness. It's very nice to stay doing nothing. Well, Italian life, Italian style, that's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think, yeah. It's very different from maybe American. We stay at the beach until 7 o'clock in the evening, then we have a, we have a drink, we go to dinner, and then, uh, okay, Riccione offers a lot of discos, and we have only to choose here what to do. And yes, like most European beaches, tops are optional. Yeah! Even during the interview. Benvenuti in Italia. That's it. Brava. Thanks a lot. Solo cinque anni in televisione. Grazie. So be prepared to party all night and sleep your day away. I sleep on the beach. Uh, I, yeah, I go, <clears throat> I go out in the club uh, in the night. That's it. <laughs> Bye. Don't go away, because when we come back, we'll unmask some of the mysteries behind some unusual Italian arts. Plus Venetian glass and later the Woodstock of Eros. Tomorrow on E! at 8, Talk Soup with new host Hal Sparks. At 8.30, Mysteries and Scandals uncovers the secrets of high-flying adventurer Charles Lindbergh. At 9, the E! True Hollywood Story looks at the mesmerizing real-life drama behind Bewitched. Tomorrow, starting at 8, only on E! Hard charging, pile driving, and more popular than ever. But one question remains. It's predetermined. The blood has always been real. Inside Pro Wrestling, the E! Original Special, next Sunday at 8, only on E! It's in your face! interesting. The Volkswagen Jetta. Sometimes everything just comes together. Daddy! Hi, Funk Kid. Hey, Daddy, home. What did you bring me? <gasps> oh, look what I got for you. <gasps> it's a bracelet. I got Mommy one just like it. People are cheap. That's why since 1986, we've helped millions get the lowest airfares. <laughs> cheap tickets. Because you're cheap. And so are we. Hi, I'm Drew Carey, and you're watching E! Entertainment Television. All 24 hours a day on E! Now, for the first time ever, Taboo TV takes you to the next level of shock video with America Uncovered. See the wildest parties in the country and the weirdest moments ever captured on videotape as Americans let down more than just their hair. You won't believe your eyes when your neighbors bear it all on spring break at nude beaches and parties of unbridled debauchery. Taboo TV traveled the country and captured America's most bizarre moments and public displays of uninhibited celebration. It's too hot for TV. It's America Uncovered. For only $35, you can have this exclusive collector's video. We even pay the shipping. And if you order now, we'll send you Mardi Gras Uncovered, a $40 value absolutely free. That's right, you'll receive America Uncovered and Mardi Gras Uncovered for only $35. Call 1-800-890-7000 now. That's 1-800-890-7000. You must be 18 years of age. Caution, if you're offended by public nudity, do not respond to this offer. That number again, 1-800-890-7000. Call now. Welcome back to Wild on La Dolce Vita. I'm Jules Asner. We're here in Italy to unmask some of the mysteries of an Italian art. Venetian masks are truly unique expressions of art. These vibrant and distinguished facades can be found all over Venice in a variety of styles and tastes. But there is more to their appearance than meets the eye, as I found out. Masks are a part of Venetian tradition. So you see, like, in this wall here, we have different styles as regards masks. I mean, they are made in paper mache. Maybe I can show to you one, like this one here, That's for example. You see, this is a woman, because there's, that one is the male version. And these are masks that you can wear or you can use for decoration. Now, where would somebody wear this? 
I mean, here in Venice in uh, February, 40 days before Easter, we'll begin our carnival. And carnival in Venice is one of the best, <laughs> the most important here in, in Europe. It's also arguably the biggest party in Venice. People from all walks of life and all parts of the world converge here to become part of this festive occasion. And you don't necessarily need to wear a mask to join in the fun. <laughs> Behind each disguise is the skill and imagination of an artist, but that's not all. What are these made of? They are made of paper mache, and in this case, many, many layers of paper mache. And then you see, for example, in this case, you have a Renaissance decoration made in silver leaf, in this case, and in relief also. If you're looking for something a bit more sinister, well, you can find that too. This mask is made of leather, hammered leather. And there's a, it's a difficult technique to, to be able mm -hmm. to see all the details for the wrinkles. This is um, horse's mane, I think, mm -hmm. horse's hair. And, and this is Pantalone. Pantalone was, I mean, he represents the old man here. Mm -hmm. And so all the negative aspects to be old, for example. A Venetian mask does indeed add a certain flair to the person wearing it. And because it is an art form steeped in tradition, every mask is as individual as the artisan who created it. The color under the chin here is typical for the Joker and 18th century. And this artist is using her own face to make masks, her own features. A mask is something that allows you to, to change your personality, mm -hmm. but also to give more importance to yours. I've decided this one is very me. This one is me. Very elegant, very me. Venetians are known for their wonderful glass, and we're about to get a lesson in the art of blowing. Let's go. Since the late 13th century, the island of Murano has been known the world over for its extraordinary glass makers. And when in Venice, one of the most popular things to do is to watch these skilled artisans at work. Actress Lili Sobieski did just that when she took a break from the film festival and joined me on a tour of a typical glass factory. Our guide was owner Paolo Juris. This is the oven. Inside the oven there are a few melting pots, you know, they're different sizes. There are two or three. One of them, the big one, contains a clear glass. The other one contains colored glass. Their starting process is this. This is a... Uh, Sand, it's a uh, silicate, potassium mm -hmm. soda. They use uh, other minerals to uh, to melt. Mm -hmm. Now, during the night, these uh, raw materials are put into the uh, melting pots. Mm -hmm. The temperature increases until 1450 centigrade. It melts, it boils, and it becomes glass. This process has barely changed in hundreds of years. It is very interesting to know that this people works in the same way they were used to work centuries ago. That means they use the same personal tools, they use the same uh, workmanship, but each of them has its own specialty. So there is people making glasses, people making chandeliers, people, people sculpturing the glass. They reached such a level that they are considered all over the world like a real artist. Now, can you show us what he's doing right now with that? He's making uh, the stem of a flower, which is, will be the uh, decoration or part of a chandelier. See the leaf on the top? Uh -huh. That's the way they make the leaf. They use a very simple personal tool. Now, this is the piece. Oh, it's beautiful with the gold. See, this is, these yeah. are the sparkling uh, gold in it. Yeah. You see, that's the way made. Do you remember that you just put the piece of glass over right. there, then you just did like that, you see? Over the centuries, master craftsmen like these have left their indelible mark in glass, creating some of the finest works of art known to man. And from the looks of things, they'll continue that tradition through the next millennium and beyond. Meanwhile, on the other side of Murano, glass artist Lucio Bubacco takes the first step in transforming this Lucinda spell star into an exotic statue. You, you want to pose her? Yes, yes. Of okay. course, it's important to get the pose okay. just right. And maybe the other... Okay, okay. This, 
perfect, okay? And even though she's never done this before, Lucio's model says she's definitely okay too. I feel wonderful. I've always wanted to be done by an artist, and this is a great honor. Lucio is wonderful and very excited. My heart is beating really fast. <laughs> In nearly a heartbeat, the sketches are finished. In a few moments, glass will begin to meet flame and an intricate, accurate statue will emerge. In a little while, we'll check back to see how the artwork progresses. But first, stick around, because when we come back, an orange war. Apparently, the uh, oranges symbolize the head of the king. Of course, the blood oranges make everything look kind of red and bloody. And we'll go from the exotic to the erotic. You have to have a gimmick. Cora Lee Jr.'s simple philosophy launched a thousand careers. I ride the world's smallest bicycle. From the ridiculous. We spin on anything with a point. To the sublime. Cora Lee Jr. is the person responsible for my career. For nearly 50 years, when Hollywood wanted something different. I practiced a couple of times and it came out pretty good. There was only one person to call. Why bother to go elsewhere? It's the story you haven't heard. Hollywood Outsider, Cora Lee Jr., next Sunday at 9 on the E! True Hollywood Story. Knocking you flat? Try non-drowsy Allegra. Only Allegra has fexofenadine. For people 12 and over, ask your doctor or pharmacist for more information. Side effects are low and may include drowsiness, cold or flu, nausea, or menstrual pain. Allegra, so you can enjoy the world around you. in for the best deals all year on the few remaining 99 Sportages in stock. We could prosper together. For two men down on their luck. You can pass yourself off as a gentleman. The only way to make it. Then you discover who was worth stealing from. I win, I win. Was to take it. Ladies and gentlemen, I crave your attention. But not half so much as I crave your valuables. Robert Carlyle, Johnny Lee Miller, Liv Tyler. I was fabulous and it was a bloody good laugh. Okay. Yes. Plunk it and McLean. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 1st. Just to be close to you, girl. When words are not enough. Turn off the Say it with body and soul. Come on to me, baby. Presenting the Body and Soul Collection. Get Body and Soul on two CDs or two cassettes for just $19.99. Order with your credit card and get a free album. Then audition other body and soul albums. Satisfaction guaranteed. Remember, use your credit card and get three albums for just $19.99. Call 1-800-215-3700. Order body and soul for only $19.99. Use your credit card and receive a free third album. Or send check or money order to this address. No one can tell you what thwack is. You have to see it for yourself. The Umbilical Brothers in Thwack. Call Ticketmaster today. Welcome back to Wild on La Dolce Vita. And now to northern Italy and the city of Ivrea, where the residents seem peaceful, but are actually preparing to wage a war with a tangy twist. The battles of uh, oranges is, uh, represents uh, this uh, revolution of uh, poor people against the rich people. What started this battle was a law written during the Middle Ages, which allowed noblemen to take a peasant bride to bed on her wedding night. And all the brides always did it, until the meal is Dora. In the 18th century, one maiden fought the aristocrat who wanted her virginity. She chopped off his head, then threw his head into the water. He started the revolution. It 
thing go crazy when for three days they, they celebrate Oranges normally reserved for the rich were shared among the poor at the feast. And the peasant said, ha, here with your oranges, back at you. And so that's where the pelting started. And every February since the 1940s, thousands of fruit-bearing peasants and soldiers have gathered in the town square for the reenactment. Apparently the uh, oranges symbolize the head of the king. Of course the blood oranges make everything look kind of red and bloody. And if novices, tourists, and those with citrus allergies want to avoid being massacred, they'll need to make a small purchase. Got to have a red hat, otherwise you're going to get pelted with oranges during the fights. It's supposed to be protection, but it's not much protection. I've been beamed in the neck, got beamed in the head, the back, the leg. Ouch! How much were those red hats again? As the mayhem continues and good sportsmanship prevails, the wounded walk away tired, sticky, and exhilarated. This is the most beautiful part in Italy. You have to come here. <laughs> it's a great way to spend a Sunday, family day. They sure know how to cut loose, that's for sure. I don't think I'll ever see anything that compares to it. While the battle of the oranges rages on, peace and a lot of love abound at the Woodstock of Eros. At this particular Woodstock, erotic performers, not musical ones, are the attraction. For a little less than $20, fans can enjoy a hands-on experience or just have a little good, clean fun while getting up close and personal, and I do mean personal, with some of Italy's most popular porn stars. <laughs> While the patrons cozy up to the performers, Woodstock Averos organizer Ricardo Spiki muses about his plans for this event. We want to open the sexuality in Italy and uh, with this uh, we make a very big experience in all the world. And if you thought this was an experience, you won't believe what these Woodstock gals do next. So, stick around because when we come back, the world's largest chess match a contest where you don't want to get the point and Lucinda sets Italy on fire. Wow. She was born to be a star. She worked from the time she was a baby. But it wasn't her acting that made Christina Applegate famous. The clothes got tighter. I remember, you know, they always wanted her to be in short skirts. How did this sex symbol handle the pressure? She just looked gray. She couldn't even talk. And turn into a primetime player. My prayers were answered. Discover a surprising side to this talented actress. She's a very deep spiritual person. Real stars, real stories. Christina Applegate's celebrity profile. This Wednesday at 10, only on E! Allow us to present America's best warranty. One with 10 years, 100,000 miles powertrain coverage. Five years, 60,000 miles bumper-to-bumper -bumper protection. And five years, unlimited mileage roadside assistance. Who makes such solid cars that they can offer a warranty this strong? Presenting the Hyundai Advantage. It's yours on every 1999 Hyundai. Jams five, five times the hits. Jack Jams five, five times the power. Jack Jams five, five times the fun. Jack Jams five, get it now. How do you like your Domino's deep dish pizza? Thick warm crust like this. Our deep dish crust is like that. I want it fresh when I call. We make it fresh like that. 
Melted cheese like this, like this. It is delicious like that. I want it hot when I get it. Domino's Heat Wave keeps it hot like that. So get it like this. Order one medium Domino's deep dish pizza with two toppings for $8.99 and get any second medium for $4.99. Deep dish crust, two layers of cheese, eat it up. Order some more, call now. Domino's, how you like it. For 13 years, he was the heart of their team. Every ex-player turned coach says they prefer coaching to play. Because they can't play. Now, I come bearing the New York Rangers. He's their only hope. I'm the captain on the ice. Can we win? We can skate in the mismatch of the century. Do not give these guys too much respect. From the creator of Ally McBeal and The Practice and the director of Austin Powers. We're in this game! Mystery Alaska. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 1st. Now you can get your hands on the sexy Jenna Jameson. Calendar, that is. Just go to shop.eonline.com, the Internet's one-stop shop for entertainment. Welcome back to Wild on La Dolce Vita. Well, we've discovered that Italians love their festivals, and in fact, they'll use any reason to have one. <laughs> Chess is defined as a two-player game in which pieces are moved across a marked board until one player successfully checkmates the opponent's king. In the tiny Italian village of Morostica, the rules of the game are the same, only the chess pieces literally come to life. This human spectacle started back in 1454, but after lapsing for a few hundred years, it was restored in the 1920s. You know, the chess game festival, uh, we play every two years in September, the second weekend of September. And uh, we play this festival from the last century. The town's main square is transformed into a life-size chessboard where the story of an unusual solution to an ancient love triangle is retold again and again. The two uh, young, noble young men they fall in love uh, for the daughter of the governor, Leonora, la bella Leonora. The father, the governor, decided to play a chess for the hand of this daughter. Then, as now, the winner of the game got the girl. But even with such a beautiful prize, the match is less about competition and more about putting on an elaborate show. We have uh, 550 people in costume and they uh, begin in this uh, performance with horses, with men, with flags, uh, with the uh, Hermes, the old Hermes, and also with the children and the old men and uh, people uh, in uh, every costume of this town. The villagers who populate this town of chess take great pride preserving this tradition, so when it comes time to put on the show, everyone pitches in. The festival that we prepare, we prepare all with volunteers. Huh? All volunteers of our town. I am an architect, I am not a chess uh, player. Huh? And after all the hard work, there's only one way to celebrate. We have a big dinner uh, for everything. A big dinner with 1,000 people. A big party, yeah. For a little more action than a life-size chessboard with living pieces, how about checking out a crossbow festival? We hit the bullseye in the Umbria region of Italy, where the town of San Sepolcro hosts a famous crossbow contest known as the Palio della Balestra. The Palio is a, com a competition which has gone on for the last 404 years. It takes place between San Sepolcro and Gubbio, a town in Umbria. Not much has changed since this competition began back in the Middle Ages. Uh, the two teams uh, are blessed by the uh, town priest outside the cathedral. Then they parade into the main square, which takes quite a long time, as each team parades in first with its drummers, then its noblemen and uh, women, and then the crossbowmen come in. And the Spagnatori, which are the flag wavers of Gubbio, gave their display. Even the costumes display the history of the two towns. The Sansa Wilkin costumes are based on Renaissance pictures, specifically the pictures of Piero della Francesca, who comes from Sansa Borgo. 
and all the costumes were made by the uh, uh, company in Rome that makes um, Zeffirelli's costumes for his historical pictures. But perhaps the real stars of the tournament are neither the ensembles nor the contestants. The crossbows are made in San Sebolco and Gubbio. They're made by two or three uh, craftsmen and uh, take an awful long time to make and are very expensive. Since the two towns have many competitors, the bolts are handmade and distinctly marked. Each, uh, each bolt is different, co uh, colored differently. The ones from San Suoco are brightly colored because they're Renaissance. The ones from uh, Gubbio are all the same color, but each one has the name of man on it. After drawing lots, each man fires one bolt. The object is to hit the tiny center of the bullseye. The judges must then carefully examine each bolt in the target to determine the winner. Well, they take out each bolt one by one until they find the bolt nearest the, uh, the, the small dot in the center of the target. And while the referees do their job, the flag throwers take over the town square to entertain the waiting crowd. A jubilant shout goes up when the winner is decided. The lucky fellow is hoisted on the shoulders of his fellow crossbowmen and led off to San Sepulcro's Party of the Year. Back in Venice, things were really heating up in Lucho Babaco's glass studio. Flames have transformed ordinary rods of colored glass into a statuesque representation of Lucinda's spell star, Stefania Swinney. Every bit of her has been recreated from the tip of her feather boa to the stiletto heels of her platform shoes. Which channel where do you want me to appear? While the eventual image may be delightful, holding still while it's emerging is anything but. It's hard to hold a position for that long, you know, because you start to shake and I was like, oh God, and those heels are, you know, they're, they're this high, so. It was difficult, but oh god, it was so worth it. In the end, artist, model, and onlookers are satisfied with the result. For me, exciting very much because I think old technique, same time I make new model, uh, mix together color energy. Fantastic. I don't know what to say. I'm, I, the first time I'm ever speechless. <laughs> wow. Don't go away, because coming up next. A taste of Tuscany, a place where people could come and try our products from the countryside. A royal regatta, and the Woodstock of Eros gets hands on. A sexy witch and a mere mortal. Come here and give us a kiss. Made TV magic in the 60s. The witch put ABC on the map. But the show that charmed a generation was cast under a dark spell. He had a seizure on the set. I thought she would beat it. I never dreamed that we could lose her. The haunted lives of Bewitched. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just twitch our noses and everything would be fine? It's the story you haven't heard. Bewitched, tomorrow at 9 on the E! True Hollywood Story. And welcome back to Wild on La Dolce Vita. As you can see, I'm enjoying a little bit of the good life here at the historic Cafe Florian, the oldest cafe in all of Italy. And now we're going to go on to another city, Florence. After all, that's where the Renaissance started. And as you'll see, in some ways, it's still going on. In every part of this thoroughly modern city, there are reminders of its glorious past. In Florence, everything is uh, Renaissance, so you're surrounded by this art, and if you're born here, uh, sometimes you don't even you know, spend a moment of thinking how lucky you are also to, to live in such a place. Allegra Antonori certainly knows what she's talking about. She and her two sisters, Albiera and Alessia, are the 26th generation of winemakers in the Antonori family. They are also the first women to head this family business, and that's still something of a novelty in Italy. The trio grew up in this palazzo that their ancestors acquired in 1506. Here, this family tradition of looking towards the future while acknowledging the past is distinctly visible. 
This Tintoretto painting, for example, along with the works of other Renaissance masters, adorns the walls of one special room in the older section of the home slash corporate headquarters. This was my grandfather's office until the day he passed away, when he was 93 years old. So right next to my grandfather's office, we found ourselves in the living room that today is only used in rare occasions. In this living room, we can find all paintings, couches, chairs, um, also little object of the 500, 600 and uh, 700. Those pictures there, for example, are uh, over um, a table of the 16th century, typical Tuscan table, so we try to keep here the old and the new um, all together. We are in the gallery here, just outside the offices, um, which were made to give light to the living room and to this part of the of the palace. Here you can see some statues which are um, have quite a long history as they are of the 200 from the year 200 until the 600s after Christ. And here behind me there's the family tree um, which shows the first member of the family Antinori dating back to 1183 and from then on all the different branches of the family until my great-grandparents up on top of the tree. Memories of the past, however, give way to present-day commerce in another part of the building. Now we're again downstairs and in the entrance of Palazzo Antinori we have this wine bar uh, called Cantinetta Antinori which opened up 30 years, 30 years ago with the intent of opening up a place where people could come and try our products from the countryside like our pecorino cheese, our olive oil, obviously our wines. These days, the Cantonetta is a full-fledged restaurant, and the Antinori wines grown on the sunny hillsides of Tuscany continue to blend the contemporary and the ancient. Badia Pasiana is an abbey of the 900s, of the year 900s, it's very old, and it's always been part of this order of monks called Benedettini Vallombrosani. When we bought it in 1987, the monks of this order that only had another abbey in Tuscany called Vallombrosa, uh, for their order, uh, really wanted to come back and um, re-enter the Abbey of Passignano. So we gave back the Abbey. We kept the territory, 500 hectares of land, of which 40 uh, today we produce wines. The grapes from these vineyards produce some of Marchese Antonori's finest Chiantis. And while Chianti is just one of the company's many products, it's the one that's undergone the biggest transition in just a few short decades. You used to go in a restaurant, you used to see the prosciutti, the parmesan and the fiasco of wine, you know, attached to, um, to, to the roof of the room. Today, this is completely different. People are looking for quality rather than quantity. Uh, the lifestyle is changed, the kitchen is changed, and this is what we try to do with, uh, with our wines. Keeping the tradition always, but adapting to the change, the continued changing of, uh, of lifestyle. Boy, is that good. You know, while I continue to sip this and enjoy the view, we're going to take you to the Binali de Firenze. It's a festival where fashion design meets film. The Biennale filled several sections of Florence with a number of special events and exhibits. The first part of the exhibition is um, we ask a few designers to restore and conserve important movies from the past of uh, different important directors. So each one uh, choose the movies that inspired their collections. Another movie that not only inspired its own costume exhibit, but also drew the film stars to Florence for a gala premiere was Ever After. It's the updated story of Cinderella, so of course the central character, played by Drew Barrymore, could be outfitted by no one but Florence's footwear impresario, Ferragamo. They, they made the shoes for our film, so it's only appropriate, and they've given me this lovely dress, and so we all sort of want to support each other. But the festivities for Ever After didn't stop there. After all, there could only be one suitable way to end the night. Tonight there is the big social event of the Biennale, and it's uh, the Cinderella Ball. There's a lot of big stars in the ball, and we ask all the designers that are here in the different exhibition, even uh, other designers, to arrive with a special guest 
uh, with a dress inspired from one of the characters of the story. So we'll have the godmother, the, the sister, the ugly sisters, the prince. We'll see all these surprises. It wasn't any surprise to see Drew in a gown that Cinderella would envy, and she certainly captured the mood of the moment. It just feels like a really, really, like a dream come true, you know? I think that we all fantasize about something like this, and you know, it's an evening, and then you go back to your normal life in the day, but how wonderful it is while it lasts. <laughs> We've saved the wildest for last. When we come back, the secret to the most famous drink in Venice. Cheers. Plus, let's find out why this star wants to move to America. Have you ever wanted to be someone else? What if you could wake up tomorrow as another person? Not pretending, but actually being them. Sign up at jmincorporated.com. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. I was actually him. JM Incorporated has acquired the proprietary rights to a unique portal that when linked to a ripe vessel body will allow you to start being anyone you desire. JM Incorporated showed me the light. You've given me new direction and inspiration. I'm reborn! What are you waiting for? Sign up at jmincorporated.com today and change your life forever. for the best deals all year on the few remaining 99 Sportages in stock. Hey, feast your eyes on this. The big New Yorker pizza from Pizza Hut. Now this is what pizza's supposed to be. Look at this thing. 16 inches of real street corner pizza dripping with cheese. Look at all this cheese. Over a pound of cheese on this masterpiece. You know what a pound of cheese costs at the market? And we dropped the price a buck. Now it's just $8.99. $8.99. What part of big, good, and incredible deal don't you understand? Hurry, this price ain't gonna last. So if you want to feed a lot of big mouths without taking a big hit in the wallet, try the big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Try it already. Just to be close to you, girl. When words are not enough. Turn off the lights. Say it with body and soul. Come on to me, baby. Presenting the Body and Soul Collection. You are my lady. Get Body and Soul on two CDs or two cassettes for just $19.99. Order with your credit card and get a free album. Then audition other body and soul albums. Satisfaction guaranteed. Remember, use your credit card and get three albums for just $19.99. Call 1-800-215-3700 order body and soul for only $19.99. Use your credit card and receive a free third album. Or send check or money order to this address. Good evening, America. I'm Hal Sparks. This just in. Coming up on the Talk Soup Weekend Edition, Sam Donaldson screams like a little girl and Barbara Walters dresses like a Playboy bunny. Next, right here on E! Welcome back to Wild on La Dolce Vita. We're back here in the Piazza San Marco, and I've made a new friend here, Giovanni Angelieri. Now, are you just walking around with your violin? <laughs> yes, usually when I practice, I walk all the time. I've just gotten here, and I understand this is the heart of Venice here in the Piazza. Do you mind giving me a little bit of a tour? Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. The Piazza San Marco was named for the city's patron saint, Mark the Evangelist. His symbolic beast, the winged lion, marks the seaward entrance to Venice. This is the Basilica San Marco? Yes, the symbol of Venice. It's absolutely gorgeous. The basilica was built to house the body of St. Mark, and over the centuries this remarkable cathedral has been decorated with magnificent statues and mosaics. Are those the original four horses? No, the originals are inside now. Uh -huh. But the, the four horses has a very long and interesting story. They come from ancient Greece. 
brought to Venice in 1204, then stolen by Napoleon in 1798, these bronze creatures finally returned home in 1815, where they have remained as symbols of Venetian liberty. Now, what's this right here that's being worked on? The, the tower clock, also a symbol of Venice. It's also very ancient. Well, so this is the clock tower. Yes. And there's a bell there, but this is the bell tower. Yes, the bell tower of the church. Okay. That fell down in, in 1902. And so they rebuilt it? Yes, the Venetians wanted it like it wasn't where it was. They did not want to lose the bell tower. Every day, hundreds of visitors come to see the beautiful architecture of these historic buildings, but that's not all they'll see in the piazza. What is with the pigeons? <laughs> it's, it's something usual here to feed the pigeons and to have them. It's also a part of... Just a part of Venice? Yes. Go away! Go away! <laughs> So much for me and Venetian wildlife, I've got other adventures in mind. Would you like maybe to take a gondola? A gondola ride in Venice? Yes. When in Venice? Between the skillful navigation of a gondolier and the musical talent of a classically trained, internationally renowned violinist, my gondola ride was one to remember. Now, how long have you been playing? I started to play when I was five years old. But even when you were small playing, did your family know? Did your teachers know you had this gift? I had the, the luck to be in a family of musicians. My parents are both pianists, so the music was always a part of the, the life. Music is a part of life for many Venetians, and the gift of song is something that comes naturally. As naturally as the art of fine dining. Well, here we are at the famous Harry's Bar, and I'm here with Enrico Cipriani. Now, this is your restaurant. Yes, it is. It's, it's my restaurant. It's actually, I'm the son of the man who started this place in 1931. Now, I've been told whenever you come to Venice, you have to come to Harry's Bar, you have to have a Bellini. See, the Bellini that is, uh, known all over the world. Mm -hmm. And it's a combination of um, fresh peach juice and uh, Italian champagne. This is better with the champagne. Yeah, of course, the Italian, yes. So good. Well, I wasn't the only one enjoying this delicious concoction. Downstairs, I found Famke Jansen, who was in town for the Venice Film Festival, having a drink of her own. Now, have you ever been here to Harry's Bar before? Yeah, I was here uh, nine years ago but that was not for the festival, that was just a, you know, visit Venice as a tourist. Tourist or resident, everyone enjoys a Bellini. Congratulations. Salud. Salud. Let's check out another Venetian tradition. Watch and see what happens when every seaworthy gondola in town hits the Grand Canal for the Regatta Storica. This annual boat race is a trial of strength and skill for gondoliers, and every year thousands of spectators line the canal to catch the grand event. The day begins with a festive maritime parade down the Grand Canal. This huge procession of historic craft packed with crews in traditional costumes brings a blaze of color to the canal. After the opening ceremonies, the race is on. And no matter who wins the competition, this historic event is a celebration for all Venetians. And say hello once again to the Woodstock of Eras. By the time we got there, about a half a million fans, okay, maybe it just seemed like it, had turned out to see the star of the show. My name is Eva Enger and uh, I am new porn star. Uh, with this moment, the first porn star in Italy. I want to work uh, in America in porn and uh, erotic film. Erotic film in America may be in her future, but performing live in Italy is the order of this spectacular night. And Ava gives it all she's got. Thanks for joining us for Wild on La Dolce Vita. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll have to do it again real soon.
And remember, we live for this stuff. <laughs>